right, and every week we do like to wrap things up with a bit of good news, both from the headlines or from our personal lives, so that we can end on a good note. Emma, you got anything happy, positive on your mind? Because I know it's all doom and gloom up there sometimes. Right. I took I took a break <laughs> from being really sad all the time, um, and I did I did a cool thing. I moved to Utah. Um, in the, in the past couple months, I've been, I've been living in Salt Lake City. Gorgeous place. I was living in, in DC prior to that. So yeah, they're basically the same. <laughs> uh, no, not really at all. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing time. Um, it is a traditionalist conservatives paradise, <laughs> some would say. Um, so yeah, loving Salt Lake and, uh, would encourage everybody to visit. Good for you. It's important to get out there into the world. Um, and good for you for going out west. I am, I am jealous and I hope to follow you here in the next couple yeah, you're of better, years. Steven. Um, I'll go ahead and go real quick. So one thing that I am happy about, particularly in light of today's conversation, is that according to the Institute for Family Studies, the proportion of children being raised in two-parent family homes, uh, married mother and father, is on the rise after a decline that began in the latter half of the 20th century. Um, kind of census figures are showing that the proportion of children living with two parents topped 70 percent in 2020 uh, and that is off a low of 67 percent uh, in 2005 so like these are really modest increases this they're like we're just talking about like three four percentage points but those are hundreds thousands uh, of kids who are growing up with their parents together in the home and that is good news um you know the decline from 1960 is so steep so steep. It is just like a, a, a hill you can ski down, uh, but it has flattened. So you have to wonder if in the long arc of time, if, if this will go back up. Um, and I do believe, I think that we might be headed in a positive direction for at least a couple of decades on that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm not totally sure whether this is going to be controversial good news or not for this controversy uh, podcast and this Spencer audience, Clavin but, never <laughs> <laughs> never never that's uh, no I'm, I'm allergic to it as you know um, no I, I I am very heartened by the admittedly sort of multivocal and multi-part uh, national effort to push back against what has come to be called critical race theory in in schools. And the reason I say it might be controversial is because, you know, there are different views on exactly how you should get this poisonous stuff out of out of kids ears. Um, for those who don't know, critical race theory has become uh, a catch all term for an incredibly aggressive strain of of thought that sort of identifies all things bad with whiteness and then teaches this to very young, impressionable children with predictably disastrous results. Um, the, the reason that I raise it as good news here is not because I want to like have an argument about exactly how to push back against this, but because it seems genuinely as if this is an issue in which the right is pursuing an effective strategy that involves engaging on the ground. It seems like when, when parents hear about this stuff, and you can see videos coming out of school boards and things like that, um, when they understand what's really being taught, as opposed to the current sort of like leftist obfuscation about it, um, they, they genuinely find it abhorrent. And that speaks well of the uh, Ameri beleaguered American soul to me. There's a great piece, The Battle for Loudoun County, written by my uh, friend and colleague Nate Hockman um, on the American mind that sort of de deals with this in one locality. Um, but I am, I'm heartened by the fact that there is still – you can still go into school districts and, and sound yeah. the alarm about something like CRT and get a response. The pushback is real, and it has been amazing to see. I think the the grassroots note that you make is absolutely true. And we actually interviewed Nathaniel Hotchman here on Rightly uh, just a couple of days ago. So if you go into our YouTube channel, you can actually find Nate near the top of the feed talking about the battle of Loudoun County, mm -hmm. those parents against critical race theory. That is it for this week's episode of Right Now with Stephen Kent. I'm Stephen Kent. We will be back next week. New shows every Thursdays and videos throughout the week. We'll see you then.